So we have talked a lot about, you know, these main health effects um, of the human body in space, pressure, air, temperature, radiation. Um, so there's a lot of problems that are associated with these. We've only touched on some of them, kind of the, the major big ones. That's not to say there are not many, many more um, issues. There are not many more other problems that need to be solved. Um, there are a lot of other smaller considerations that comes about when you're thinking of space travel um, and problems. The noise, um, the behavioral and psychological disorders that we'll talk a lot more about uh, in a bit in Space Psychology with Kate Reynolds. Um, problems of dust, the remoteness, as we talked about a little bit in medicine, cardiac problems. How do you give CPR in space? Uh, it's actually quite tricky. You kind of have to stand on the roof um, and go up and down and do compressions with the body on the floor. Even the simple treatments are very hard. So then this raises the big issue when we start, and we already are now, sending more and more people into space, really space tourism. So this is the, the Inspiration4 mission. Uh, and Inspiration4 was a privately funded mission between Jared Isaacman uh, and Elon Musk. Uh, and the idea was there was going to be four people, uh, each of which who got uh, a seat on board. Now, the generosity seat's quite interesting. So it went to Chris, uh, and what they did was they ran a raffle. And if you gave 10 US dollars, which is about 13 Australian, you went into the raffle. And the a winner would be chosen, uh, and was chosen, uh, and uh, got one of those seats. Now, in fact, uh, Chris did not win. Chris's friend won and couldn't go and gave his ticket to Chris. Talk about the ultimate gift. I think Chris has to mow his lawn forever or something. I don't know. Um, so four people. Um, Haley Arcano was a pediatric bone cancer survivor. She really wanted to be an astronaut as a kid, um, but she wasn't able to um, because of that. And then she became a physician's assistant uh, in the U.S. Uh, and now contributed to space flight uh, through this private mission. But what this raises the issue is all of these people uh, are quite ordinary and by ordinary, we're, we're really just saying that they haven't had the training, preparation, selection that ordinary, quote unquote, astronauts have. And, and the considerations then are, how do they prepare and get ready for these health challenges in space? It's a real consideration. Um, there are lots of companies that have done this. Virgin Galactic has had their first flight and are aiming for more soon. Blue Origin has had multiple flights. Um, you can see here, here's William Shatner, who uh, at the time of this recording is the oldest person in space. And you can actually see some of the examples that we talked about earlier. He has this kind of bigger red head, uh, as we talked about with the bulging uh, arteries and, and the fluid to the head. And, you know, you can kind of tell he doesn't look comfortable. All of the fluids in his body are being shifted around. He's going through very weird feelings. Now, they're very normal weird feelings in space, but they're very real. And as an ordinary, quote unquote, person and that non-astronaut who hasn't been trained, their body is not used to these experiences. So what happens if and when people start having medical issues on these tourist flights? Now, a lot of them are very short, eight to 10 minutes, but there have been uh, now at least one and more planned um, that will be longer. There's been a batch who have gone to the International Space Station for a week and more are planned as well. So what happens to those people when they have their medical issues? This becomes one of the interesting problems um, in a academic sense of needing to be solved in space. That space flight is no longer for professional astronauts being trained, but for a number of people who are going in who may not have the proper experience or training, and then when they come back, need to have their health problems solved. So space medicine becomes a very interesting topic nowadays, not that it's just the academic sense, but in the very real, very real, more ordinary people are going into space who are likely to experience these and other problems that we haven't tested yet.